Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play The Raven, Legacy of a Master Thief. When last we left off, Constable Zelna was busy talking to Dr. Gebhardt and... Wait, this isn't exactly where we'd left things, was it? No, no, it wasn't. And that's because this is in the past. We are now playing as Adil, the man who was working alongside the butler, who we discovered in the future, the not now that we're playing, was in fact the person responsible for all the nefarious things that occurred during our adventure. The butler was the one who arranged the bomb on the, uh, on the train. This train, the Orient Express. And although apparently the butler wasn't responsible for the murder of the Countess, he took advantage of it. And now all of the blanks are going to be filled in slowly by us playing as a deal here. But for now, we need to get on the actual train. Let's see, can we actually go and look at the uh, freight car? That would be pretty cool. Let's have a look. Now don't clip through them. No, no, we're just walking around and not being at all suspicious. We are being very suspicious, aren't we? Nope, we cannot actually go there. Fair enough. We discovered last time that uh, Dr. Gebhardt was indeed a doctor. And that was his bag. We can't, however, just take the bag because it would be very, very obvious. But we do have this bottomless crate <laughs> with which we can take the bag. A cunning plan. It's now or never. Everyone can hear you, Adil. Everyone can hear you. Hey, you! Scram! Uh, yes, sir. Okay. Well, that worked. Let the games begin. That was easy. Excuse me, gentlemen. Can't you see that I am talking to the constable? The train is leaving in a few minutes, sir. I have to ask you to board it now. We should get on. Perhaps we'll be able to continue our conversation during the trip. I won't stand in the way. <laughs> and the bag's gone. Where's my bag? You left it right there. I know that. I want to know where it is now. I, I don't know. I, I'll look for it right away. If you gentlemen would get on the train in the meantime... I will hold you and your employers liable for this. I'm sure he'll find the bag. Come on, Dr. Gebhardt. I will help you with your luggage. Fine. And so we now know what happened to the bag. Hmm, we could give him a tip-off about where the bag is. The conductor doesn't really seem to know where to search for the lost bag. Finding a particular piece of luggage at a railway station is like finding a needle in a haystack. All he seems to be doing is just scratching his head constantly. I wonder if we left him there if he just keeps scratching his head forever. However, we shall indeed give the conductor a tip. <laughs> I wonder how well this'll go down. You seem to be searching for something. Can I help? Go away. There's no money to be earned here. That's not what I mean. I just thought, if you're looking for a brown bag... Why? Did you steal one? If that were true, I wouldn't be offering to help you. True. I saw a little blonde boy take the bag. He ran off with it, over there. Really? Hmm. Thanks. It's not going to end well for you, Conductor, I'm afraid. Isn't that the bag? Where? Nothing personal. Those are some heavy newspapers. Now we know what happened to the conductor, don't we? Remember he wasn't around? Now we know. You'll get in touch if you notice anything unusual. 
want you, Professor. Of course, go. What's this? What's the matter, sir? The door. I can't open it. Let me have a look. The compartment is locked. Damn. I can't let the Professor see me. I shadowed him for days in London. He might recognize me. Calm down, Professor. I'll see what I can do. You don't understand. I have to get back in my compartment. All right. Just wait here. And now we know why the compartment was locked from the inside. But we don't know how they didn't hear us speaking on this side of the door. We spoke pretty loudly there. Let's listen at the door, shall we? He doesn't give up easily. No, he doesn't. Examine the door? Professor Lucien is at the door, and he won't give up until he opens it. That means I need another way out of here. Hmm. Well, there are a few things that we can do, like we can examine his luggage. Professor Lucien seems to travel light. The Baroness's luggage takes up half a freight car. What about searching it? I don't think that the suitcase or the bag contain anything that could help me out. I'd better leave as little evidence as possible. Well, there is a key, but I suppose you don't want that right now. See, that's the thing. They thought, the professor thought that whoever was in the com his compartment was looking for the key. And that was not Adil's job here at all. Adil was simply to put the letter in the freight car on the safe. That was all Adil was sent to do. My god, I barely look like myself. I'm not as good as the Raven at slipping into other roles. He's had decades to perfect it. Whatever, it'll be good enough for the people on the train. Is there anything we can take? The sink, the sink. No, that won't help me now. However... Is there anything else? A towel! Professor Lucien hasn't slept a single night in the cabin yet. The towel is unused. Then we shall take it! Hmm. If I twisted it... Then I'd have a sort of rope. A sort of rope? That is a rubbish sort of rope. I twisted the towel to make it into a sort of rope. You have to be able to improvise, as my master used to say. Indeed. We also have a keychain. There are several special keys on the keychain. This one should open the cabin door from outside. Lucky for me that I have the key, and the people outside don't. That way, the locked door will keep them at bay a little while longer. Only a little while longer, though. Okay, we need to examine the window, for we need to get out of here. It was the only window that was open in the station, so it was a good way to get onto the train. And now, it might be my only way out. Hmm, let's open the window, shall we? Hmm, the window to the right should be the Baroness's cabin, and the one on the left is the saloon car. The roof could be my escape route. Probably is. And off we go. Sort of. Now, I'm surprised that no one could see this at that point. Or suddenly, if he just doesn't look ahead of him, go, Ugh, piece of scenery, kaplow! And then he is dead. If I stand up, my head is level with the roof. But the roof is too slanted and smooth to climb. And then you just fall and die. Those are air ducts or something. But I can't reach them with my hands. If only we had some kind of rope, eh, hey, deal. There we go. Whew. <sighs> There's nothing quite like traveling on a train. But um beat me to it, didn't you? Ah. Jump on the roof of the freight car? Climb off the roof? I think we need to actually just go over to the, uh... to the actual freight car itself. Pretty sure we need to just go up there. 
But yeah, let's go that way. That is, after all, where we're meant to go. Also, if he fell off at any point here, he would just die. This is just super dangerous. There is indeed a ventilation shaft. The ventilation shaft supplies the freight car with fresh air. It also seems big enough to climb through. I'd say I found my way in. Okay. I bet it won't open, though. The cover has two hinges on the back. It's possible to open it, but the two screws on the front hold it closed. Ah, we need to undo those. Let's have a look first. I can't see anything but the rear of the car through the slots. And that won't do. What I really need is a view of the front. Mm. We can't open the ventilation shaft. At all. The cover has two hinges on the back. But the... Mm. Right. We are going to have to go back at this point. There's not really much we can do. Let's go back. We're going to have to find something to open those uh, screws with. We're going to have to go down, aren't we? Yep, it's going down automatically. We could just go straight into the freight car door. The safe that I need to put the envelope on is in the freight car, but I can't just walk in like a delivery man. No. Oh. The safe is guarded by my old friend, the Bobby from London. Even he would be curious to see a conductor in the freight car. Indeed. And there is the toolbox. This should be locked. It looks like a toolbox. Ugh. It's secured with a heavy padlock. Hasn't been opened yet. I'm not bad at picking locks, but I don't have my equipment with me, and everything's rocking and moving in here. Given these conditions, it'd take a while to pick the lock. That makes it too risky. Indeed. But we are dressed as the conductor. We should be able I to should go... should be able to move about freely in the train, as long as I keep away from Professor Lucien. The other guests don't know me, and conductors change several times during the journey. A new face shouldn't seem suspicious to anyone. Exactly. So let's go into the cars themselves. There we go. Young man. Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, tell me, when did they switch to self-service on the Orient Express? Oh. Should they not have informed the passengers about that in advance? Uh, forgive me, sir. I was... And what about my bag? Hmm? Did your colleague find it? I'm sorry, sir. I, I don't know. I expected as much. There will be consequences. And now, bring me my coffee. Of course, sir. Coffee time! Asshole. Oh, you do not like Dr. Gebhardt. We can examine the spirits. Beer, wine, champagne, gin... Brandy and whiskey. <laughs> the richest snobs take the same medicine as the poorest slobs. Hmm. And there's the candy dish. Huh. A dish with old people's candy. Butterscotch, I think. We could take one. Do we need one? Probably. Well, he got there eventually, didn't he? He got there eventually. I don't really like butterscotch. I prefer fruity, sour flavors. Sour puts a smile on your face. Okay, I suppose it's time to go behind the bar and make a cup of coffee, doesn't it? We can open the drawer. It's probably locked. Locked. And we can't pick it. However, we can examine the coffee cup. Even pigs get to drink from the finest porcelain. Uh, we could make a cup of coffee? There's still some coffee left. Well, I think it is time to use coffee pot with... Pour some coffee. Supreme heisting! A cup of coffee for the gentleman. 
do you know what the problem with people like you is? Um, you mean our lack of a sense of duty or our skin color? Or a lack of respect for our elders? <laughs> we have so many flaws. Now that we've sorted that, we should be able to go through the rest of the, uh, the cabin. We could look at the doctor. He didn't even want to hear why it took so long to get his coffee. He just wanted to tear into someone. Just wanted to assert his will. It's a sad life if you have to pump yourself up by deflating others. Not much else we can actually do in this particular area, I think. There is a little more down here, though. Hey! Familiar faces! The younger woman seems to be some kind of carer or companion for the older lady. I wouldn't like to be with her all day long. She radiates a certain restlessness and unease. And then the older lady. The old lady didn't get on in Zurich, and she doesn't look like someone from Nancy or Basel. I'm guessing she boarded in Paris. Uh, she seems familiar somehow. That is a good statement. Probably does look familiar. Now, there is some wool here. The elderly woman's carer can't keep her hands still, so she's knitting. We could try and take it. Let us do so. Sneakily, of course. Can I bring you ladies anything? Is everything satisfactory? Everything is wonderful, young man. Very good. Got it. That was not very subtle, a deal. Sooner or later, the carer will miss her wool, even though it's just a little bit. So we're going to have to be a little careful. Okay, let's think about this. We can go to the next carriage, but I think the professor. I think Professor Lucien is still in the hallway, trying to get into his cabin. I'd better wait until the coast is clear. Yes, probably a good plan. Probably a very good plan. However, there's probably other things that we can do. We could potentially use our knife to open the... No, we can't. I thought we could. Locked. Oh, wait, I've got a keychain. Let's see. It fits. Of course it does. Is there anything in there? Huh. A lot of odds and ends. A hairnet, batteries, a half pack of cigarettes, an unused toothbrush. The bartender probably has to serve as a jack of all trades, like a concierge in a hotel. So, is there anything useful? Probably. Here we go. A small shaving mirror. There we go. We have indeed found something useful. We can examine the radio. A small portable radio. The reception is surprisingly good here in the mountains. We could take the radio? I won't be able to use the radio, but the antenna, on the other hand, uh. a thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that might come in handy. I do believe it will. The mirror is so small, I can hardly imagine how you'd shave with it, especially on a moving train. And we'll look at the antenna. A thin, short metal rod that can be extended. Something like that always comes in handy. It always does. And when we come back, folks, we will find the way out of here. There we go. Go back. Brilliant. Because we have a lot of stuff that we could use to actually get through the uh, ventilation shaft. Sort of. Kind of. Maybe. One way or another, we've got to get through there. And when we come back, folks, we shall try and do so. I'll catch you next time, and I'll see you then. Later.